Singapore, the two weeks of intense discussion on the presidential address in Parliament has unanimously pointed to the danger of inequality and hardening social mobility in Singapore. The city-state has one of the highest income disparity levels among developed economies, though not among other global cities, before taxes and government transfers. In the long run, this rift will undermine our social fabric and erode public confidence in our institutions. To the credit of our policymakers and social service sectors, they have put in place policies and programs to tackle the imbalance of opportunities and enhance upward mobility for the disadvantaged. Provisions of financial assistance in local schools, special housing grants for low-income families, medical subsidies for the vulnerable, and community care funds for the disabled are just some items on a long list of policies aimed at narrowing the gulf. Inequality can also affect social cohesion among Singaporeans from different backgrounds. Recognizing this, the government has supported the nurturing of shared experiences between communities to promote social bonding and empathy in spite of the socio-economic plurality. Collective memories such as the National Day parades, and Chinge celebrations, and shared spaces like community clubs, schools and recreational parks serve to bridge social divides. This is, however, an uphill task. Singaporeans are not immune to the visceral desire to be close to people of the same kind, be it based on ethnicity or class. This easily translates into a tendency to reside in locations that resonate with their own socio-economic standing. Eventually, an enclave neighborhood is formed, built either on the back of economic status or on ethnicity. Collective memories such as the National Day Parade serve to bridge social divides. Photo, Lian Chia, Geography is Fate? Inequality has a geographic dimension, even for a small and densely populated place like Singapore. Ignore geography and we miss important drivers of inequality and lose opportunities to mitigate them. A concentration or segregation of people based on socio-economic standing has a profound impact on the well-being of individuals. There are broadly two categories of geographic inequalities, disparity between and within neighborhoods. Disparity across neighborhoods in the United States. The economic status of a neighborhood or state has a great impact across a sweeping range of well-being indicators. Research has found that people who live in disadvantaged neighborhoods in their childhood tend to have prolonged periods of poor health in adulthood and are associated with a reduced likelihood of graduating from high school. Singapore, unlike the US, is both a country and a global city. The dividends from economic development in cities tend to be more evenly distributed than nations with a larger land mass. Singapore is the latest economy in the region to show an improvement as global demand improves, photo, AFP slash Toting Wei. Nevertheless, here, the distribution of economic and social outcomes are also skewed in favor of certain neighborhoods. According to the 2015 Singapore General Household Survey, more than 4 in 10 households, 44.4% in Bukit time earn at least 20,000 Singapore dollars a month, the highest income bracket in the statistical classification. This proportion is eight times as many compared to households. In Woodlands, 5.4%, or Yishan, also 5.4%. What is perhaps more surprising is that one in five households in Bukit Mera live in a rented flat, while this figure is less than one in 25 in Sengkang or Simbang. Neighborhoods also differ in terms of important non-economic indicators, such as the number of vulnerable households. Yishan has two times the proportion of people, 4.8%, who are divorced or separated compared to residents in Bukit Panjang, 2.42%. Worryingly, in recent times, there has been a distinct clustering of brand name schools. These include the Rafflesian schools in Bishan, 
the Anglo-Chinese schools in Dover Road, and schools of the Huichong family in Bukit Timah. It is no coincidence that resale prices of houses near elite educational schools are higher than the average. Qualified and deserving students living in less well-off estates may have to travel a longer distance to these schools, and may therefore miss out on the opportunity to attend better institutions. Chong Institution Photo, Gisling slash Wikimedia Commons, disparity within neighborhoods Harvard University Professor Robert Putnam found that diversity of demographics such as income, race, or religion are often linked to greater distrust in neighborhoods. There's less incentive among people living in the community to interact with one another if they do not share similar physical or social attributes. Even in a low-crime society like Singapore, there are subtle differences in the quality of life across neighborhoods. In a study published by the Institute of Policy Studies in December 2017, residential estates with a more diverse range of dwelling types, which include Marine Parade and Bootgate Mera, are correlated with more petty crime. An area with a high index for dwelling type diversity would have a wide mix of high-end private housing, as well as HDB flats of various room sizes including low-end housing. Such neighborhoods reported more transgressions than places that are either equally rich or poor. This appears to support Putnam's findings that the effects of income inequality, if unmitigated, could lead to low social capital and more antisocial behavior like crime. File picture of armed policemen in Singapore. Photo, AFP slash Rosalind Rahman, read. A commentary on tackling inequality by moving from emotion to action. Read. A commentary on bridging the class divide. The future of neighborhood show do we mitigate the challenges linked to economic disparities between and within neighborhoods. Across neighborhoods, there are policies to ensure that there is a healthy mix of residents from diverse background, like the collocation of rental and the bigger HDB units. There is also considerable attention to provide a wide range of quality amenities in various corners of the island. We should explore and pioneer new initiatives in this area. First. Popular institutions such as good schools could be made geographically dispersed to enable bright students from relatively vulnerable neighborhoods to have convenient access to these institutions. Second, we need to do more to identify and provide more class-less touchpoints that can foster shared experiences. Hawker centers and recreational parks are some examples of these places. These locations provide a service that is desired by both the wealthy and needy, is non-exclusive, and all patrons or visitors are treated alike. File photo of a Hawker Center. Within neighborhoods, the permeability of social classes needs be enhanced. Creating opportunities for interaction alone is a necessary but not a sufficient condition to nurture understanding and empathy between the social classes. Putnam has found that having diverse people residing in the vicinity do not necessarily lead to more meaningful contact or shared experiences. Contact must be meaningful, not superficial, and contrived. More research is needed to identify the type of facilities and the conditions of use that residents feel comfortable interacting with others from a different background. For instance, residents from both lower and upper class households can be brought together to tackle common problems that affect everyone living in the same neighborhood, such as preventing mosquito infestation, traffic congestion, or errant use of personal mobility devices. Not every neighborhood will be the same, but every neighborhood can be a good neighborhood by forging a shared ecosystem that bring people together regardless of race, religion or class. Dr. Leon Chan Hung is the head of Social Lab. 
a survey research unit in the Institute of Policy Studies, National University of Singapore. He is presently the lead researcher for a national survey on how environmental features influence attitudes to immigrants and social trust.